welcome, welcome one and all, step right up and get your tickets for another moment in gaming history. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, welcome officially to the channel. This is a series where I go into various different moments in video game history, and today I want to talk about something that's more of a mechanic and how it's used. Also, when it first saw its true potential in video games, and that's physics. In particular, I want to talk about a particular engine, the Havoc engine, and a game that changed how we look at how it's used in video games, and that's Half-Life 2. So if you have a moment, sit back and hang out a while while I go into early physics and games, and how the Havoc engine really pushed the envelope as far as how physics can be used in a game, and changed how we interact with these worlds forever. Now, this is normally the kind of thing I would probably cover in my game mechanic series, and I'll likely do an episode on it going into greater detail in the near future, but I thought it would be a good topic to go ahead and touch on as far as moments because this is an important moment, especially since this goes all the way back to games like Pong. And I know some of you are laughing, but it's pretty accurate. I mean, when you think about it, when you hit the ball, it actually has a reaction. It changes its trajectory and sends it back towards the opponent. If you hit it with a certain angle, it'll hit the wall. The wall will make it change its angle again. This is a primitive, yet effective use of rudimentary physics in a game. Even Mario would use it with momentum in his run. They could carry that into jumps and often make it harder to stop. Super Mario Bros. would often have the effect of gravity, which early games were using, that would affect Mario and the other characters, adding to the challenge and the feel of the game, making it feel a little bit more immersive. It was an extra bit of complexity to the game that added a level of realism. However, the Havoc engine sought to change all this. This was one of the earliest engines designed to specifically imitate real-world physics in a video game. And this was released in 2000, and used in several games, but none so dominant as Half-Life 2. Half-Life 2 really sought to change the way we interacted with first-person shooters in 3D environments in general. The team actually began work on this almost immediately after the launch of the original Half-Life. And what they wanted to do with this was to make character models and facial expressions more realistic than anything else that had come before it. And while doing this, they began to see what the Havoc engine can do and decided to work it into the game of Half-Life 2. This allowed them to move objects, throw them, even use them to stack things to reach new locations. Explosions would even affect objects in the world, causing chain reactions of destruction. All of this seemed pretty standard these days, but at the time, this was a completely new concept to most gamers. You see, most objects before now had either been explosive in the fact that they would set of chain reactions of other explosions, but wouldn't move anything around them while doing so. Or they were just parts of the environment that you would have to move around them, or just use them as platforms. You couldn't affect them or move them in any tangible way. Thanks to this incorporation of Havoc into Half-Life 2, the world could now see just how impactful this would be moving forward. Soon, every game was making use of physics in video games, and graphics cards were starting to incorporate physics coprocessors to balance the load between graphics processing and the dynamic movement needed by modern games. This is usually where I'd go on and theorize of the relevance and influence of the topic. However, in this case, there's absolutely no denying the impact that this had on many game worlds to come. It absolutely changed the landscape of how developers and gamers look at video games and the worlds that are being built, opening up more and more options for gameplay, like was shown in games like Breath of the Wild. You could take out enemies directly, or use items in the physics presence in the world around you to get an edge on your opponents. Even Goat Simulator makes good use of physics in its own erratic way to make for a more increasingly dynamic experience. I mean, by today, the Havoc Engine has been used in over 600 games, pretty much changing the entire landscape, graphics cards, and the entire world of video games forever. However, what do you guys think of this one? Do you think this is a cool moment? What's your favorite use of physics in a video game? What's your favorite physics video game? Let me know in the comments. For now though, thank you for spending part of your day with me. If I can ask you for one more favor, please leave this video a like. 
And if you haven't, consider subscribing. It really does help me out a lot. However, for now, thank you one last time for spending part of your day with me. And until next time, happy gaming.